my friends, I greet you this season of Easter, this time of the power of the resurrection. I welcome you to worship here at Mount Sinai Congregational Church. Our digital worship is offered to God so that people who aren't able to make it here on Sunday morning, for whatever reason, can still join us in worship. I'm grateful you are here, and I'm grateful that you're a part of our community, wherever you are. Let us worship God together. O oh God, worker of wonders, you made this day for joy and gladness. Let the risen Lord abide with us this day, opening the scriptures to us and breaking bread in our midst. Set our hearts aflame and open our eyes so that we may see in his sufferings all that the prophets foretold and recognize him at this table as the Christ, now entered into his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, church family, and welcome Sunday School children. Spring is in the air. I have been waiting for this, and I could not be happier because I was out in my garden looking at some of my plants, and I have here some baby um, hostas that are starting to come up. This pot is probably going to be too small, and I'm going to have to repot it, so I've got some nice new potting soil here. Um, I love to start my own seeds. These are actually forget-me-nots, and again, same thing, going to have to repot them and get them ready for the outside. All pots that you're working with should have a hole in the bottom so that they have plenty of drainage. Um, this is a fun thing that we have in our house and we keep this one inside. This is a uh, succulent and was not looking so good a while ago. So my daughter did some pruning, we repotted it and it seems to be thriving. I also have some seeds. Pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. Now, I'm not sure exactly when you're supposed to plant them, but I know that I like to do it when it gets a little warmer, and we're going to do some of this in Sunday school. So we've got our potting soil, we've got to get some containers that we're going to work on, um, and this all ties in with our creation story, which we are going to be working on over the next couple of weeks. So I hope you will join us, and we'll keep you posted. Thank you.
Our Ancient Witness, from John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord! When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, 
When you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which you would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. Our Modern Witness God Bless the Church, a Prayer by Katie Stenta This is a prayer for all the babies in church, loud and crying, breastfeeding or stinky, sleeping and beautiful. And for all of the kids, squirmy or cute or talkative or shy, and the people who can't sit, and the ones who can't stand, and the people who whisper throughout, and the elder who falls asleep, and the ones who can't hear, and the faithful who always sit in the same spot and the teen who scribbles or is on the phone and seems to ignore everything. You are a part of the church, and you are blessed. This is a prayer for Easter Christmas attenders, the one-time attenders, the homebound church members, the ones who attend every week, but will never, ever, 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 ever join. You are a part of the church, and you are blessed. This is a prayer for the digital worshippers who some say aren't really at church, for the latecomers who enter by the inconvenient door, for the pastor who forgets the words to the Lord's Prayer, <laughs> for the one responsible for the misprinted bulletin, you are a part of the church, and you are blessed. This is a prayer for the worship service that was too quiet, or too loud, or whatever. This is a prayer for those who couldn't give for offering, for the ones who dressed differently or immediately felt rejected, for the ones who felt left out or overwhelmed when they walked in the door. You are a part of the church, and you are blessed. This is a prayer for all those who came to church and didn't feel welcome, because there is no apology for that. This is a prayer for the church, the invisible, miraculous body of Christ. However you are a part of the church, for you are beloved and always blessed. We are made up of all of these pieces. The eye cannot say to the hand, you are not a part of me. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus that this is true of the church of Jesus Christ. Let us continue to be the body of Christ this thing we call church, and continue to bless us in all of our parts, we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you that your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word now dwell within us. As we hear your word, let us be doers of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. Last Sunday, I took some vacation. I followed the ancient schedule of the church that has Ash Wednesday and then the season of Lent, Palm Sunday and Holy Week, Easter, and then vacation. And thanks to digital worship, I was with Cotuit Federated Church in Cotuit, Massachusetts. And there, the Reverend Angela Minky Ballou offered a good word a word about Jesus showing up in the resurrection and how Jesus showed up in the ways that people needed. So, to disillusioned disciples walking away from Jerusalem thinking it was all over, Jesus shows up and he walks with them. Walks side by side with them in their valley of the shadow of death and then opens their eyes and they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. To Mary Magdalene weeping at the tomb, he shows up 
She thinks it's the caregiver, the caretaker. She thinks it's the gardener. But he speaks her name tenderly and lets her know it's him. To the disciples who are scared and locked up in their room, Jesus shows up anyway. They need to know that the door of their fear and the stone of the tomb cannot stop God's love. To Thomas, who would not believe unless he saw the proof for himself, Jesus shows the scars, the wounds, his hands and feet. And for Peter... For Peter, who denied Jesus three times. Peter, who claimed not to know Jesus, even after rash promises. How does Jesus meet Peter? They don't recognize Jesus at first. They're out fishing. They've been fishing for a long time. They're tired. But even so, the resurrection means people don't recognize Jesus at first. A strange phenomenon, but there it is. They reckon him somebody, I'm sure, just wanting to buy fish. Somebody who's hungry. But they haven't caught anything. Nothing. A long night of fishing and nothing to show for it. Jesus says, cast your nets on the other side. Uh, Whatever, dude. What does this guy on shore know about fishing anyway? But they try it. And the nets. The nets are so full, they're about to break. The boat is about to be swamped. There's only one way abundance like this shows up after nothing. They know it's the Lord. Only one way this many fish are caught after nothing. It's got to be Jesus. Cut to a little later and Peter and Jesus are talking over some breakfast. They've grilled some fish. They're eating together. We might well imagine that this is the conversation Peter needed to have, but not one he wanted to have. We know something about conversations like that, don't we? A tense conversation, it's risky. Something important is at stake in the listening and in the speaking. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? When Jesus first met Peter, he renamed him. It's way back in the first chapter of John's Gospel. You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, which is translated Peter. It means rock. Simon, son of John. That was his name back before he knew Jesus. And now after so much that they've been through together, Jesus doesn't call him Peter, doesn't call him by the name Jesus gave him. Simon, son of John. That's how the world knew him. Not how Jesus and the disciples knew him. Simon, son of John, not Peter. His old name. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Is Jesus calling him out? Peter had denied Jesus three times. Three times he'd claimed not to know him. And now Jesus uses the name he had before he knew Jesus. This is Peter, the bravest of the disciples, the brashest of the followers, the one who was willing to try to walk on water for Jesus. Back in our reading from Maundy Thursday, when Jesus gathered with the disciples in the upper room, he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. 
That's where we stopped that Thursday night. But if we kept going just a little longer, if we kept reading, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going, you cannot follow. You cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterwards. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, Will you? Will you lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. And Peter did. In the time of trial, Peter is asked, You're not one of those disciples of that man, are you? And he says, I am not. A second time, a second time Jesus says to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? You, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Tend my sheep. I wonder if Peter's chest tightened up each time Jesus used his old name, every time Jesus questioned whether or not he loved him. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Peter denied him three times. Three times he said, I am not which in Greek is actually reversed. It, it's literally not I am. There's seven famous sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John where he says, I am. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. And in the time of trial, Peter answered, I am not. Three times Peter denied him. And three times Jesus asks, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And our translation says Peter was hurt. It's better stated he was sorrowful. He was grieved. He was heart sick. He felt terrible. He knows what has happened. He has no illusions about what he did. But Jesus showed up in the locked room for the disciples who needed him there. He showed up for Mary in the garden where she needed to know what had happened to her Lord. He was on the road with those who were walking in their grief. And Peter's threefold shame, Jesus offers three chances to begin again. In Peter's threefold grief, Jesus asks him, Do you love me? And Peter gets three chances to offer a new answer. And in this moment, we also learn the crux of faith. If we love Jesus, we tend the sheep. If we love Jesus, we feed the sheep. Jesus comes to each and every one, each and every one of us, with a grace to match whatever our need is. Jesus meets each and every one of us where we are, in the ways that we need. And if we love Jesus more than these, then there is no separation between love and service. Thanks be to the God of resurrection. Thanks be to the God of new beginnings. Thanks be to the God of faith and hope and love. Thanks be to the God of forgiveness and grace. Thanks be to God. Amen.
When I lose myself and wander far away When I find myself inside a mess I've made When I wish that I could just undo it all Well then that's when I recall That there's a love that's waiting for me to come home This love is waiting for me to come home and there's nothing I can do And nothing I have done That can take away this love I can never lose this love When I lose myself and wander far away I find myself inside a mess I've made When I wish that I could just undo it all Well then that's when I recall That there's a love that's waiting for me to come home This love is waiting for me to come home And there's nothing I can do And nothing I have done that can take away this love I can never lose this love We can never lose this love For our prayer this morning, I want to offer one written by the Reverend Katie Stenta. We heard one of her prayers as our modern witness, and this is another. Disability glorified. A prayer. Let us pray. Ableism kills. Jesus, you were not ableist. What kind of diagnoses did your twelve disciples have? Who limped? Who was ugly? Who had voices? Who had ADD or autism or OCD? As you healed and were asked what sin was committed that this person is blind, the people asked and then our Savior said, None, neither he nor his parents. And then, Jesus, you touched lepers and those who were lame or blind or bled, the poor, the oddly shaped, and the dirty the ones who humans avoided even looking at. Because in our heart of hearts, we are so scared of disabilities that we avoid eye contact, afraid of catching it, embarrassed that we still, even today, do not know how to interact with people who exist differently than us. In some ways, Jesus' resurrection might be the scariest thing of all. Jesus, you were young and healthy and died anyway, and the disciples, of course, fled death. Except for the women, who probably had the most intimate relationship with death and dead bodies. Jesus, the good news is not just that you returned, but you returned with holes in your arms and legs. But you were still wholly you unchanged. You were still perfect, but your body was still yours. What hope for those with disabilities? It leads us to ask, are there wheelchairs and mobility aids in heaven? Is this a place where your body is not weighty and there is no more pain, but you are still you? Are those with dyslexia, ADD, OCD, bipolar, Down syndrome, autism, and more they are beloved and understood. Jesus, I am so thankful that you got it, that you get it, that ableism kills, that you do not promise wealth and health, that you do not need our bodies to be perfect for us to enter heaven. You know, Jesus, I am not yet 40 and relatively healthy, and I would definitely fail that test. 
Jesus, I am thankful that as humans make decisions that are more and more ableist and fall more and more in the vein of a death cult, ignoring all those who aren't fit or rich or whatever, that I am hanging on with every breath I take that Jesus is not ableist. And maybe Thomas wasn't either. As sure as the holes remained in Jesus' sacred body, holes that I am invited to touch whenever I doubt or feel alone or scared of my own imperfections, I can breathe in. Jesus wasn't ableist. And breathe out. And Jesus affirms all people. Thank you, God, for the risen, holy, holy body. This we pray in Jesus' name as we join our voices together in the prayer that he taught using the words on the screen or those closest to our hearts, the prayer that begins, Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. have seen me in my sorrow you have heard me in my pain you have known me in my suffering you have loved me in my shame and i sing holy 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 is your name and i say glory 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 to your name Sing of the new day that you bring. They sing glory, glory, glory to your name. You have held me in my questions. You have heard me when I pray. You have looked on me with favor. You have never And I 
On the road to Emmaus, Jesus walked with disciples. They were overwhelmed by what had happened. They knew Jesus was dead. They knew that empire had won, and they had left. They had gone back home. And heading that way, Jesus met them on the road, and he walked with them. And surely that is one of the ways compassion is practiced walking with people, in the midst of their turmoil, in the midst of wilderness, in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. And they arrived, and he was going to keep going, but they said, stay with us. They were known in their hospitality. And Jesus took them up on it. And he took the bread and he gave thanks for it, and he broke it, and their eyes were opened. How many times had they seen Jesus do this? How many times with the multitudes had he taken bread and given thanks for it and broken it and fed all those people? How many times had the hungry been fed in their presence? And it's how he did that. It's how he broke the bread. They knew it was him. And their eyes were opened. That's our prayer as well, that wherever we receive communion, and we do so digitally each week, when we receive communion, our eyes would be opened and we would recognize the risen Christ in our midst, maybe even within one another. And so we remember the night he was betrayed. We remember that place on the hillside with the multitudes, we remember in that guest room in Emmaus, he took bread. He gave thanks to God for it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. This is my body given for you. Eat this. And do so in remembrance of me. And we also remember how he took the cup after the supper. He poured it and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so with broken bread in whatever form you have, in cup, whatever form it takes, I invite you to partake and know the goodness of our God. Know the love that cannot be stopped. The body of Christ is given for you. Take and eat. Amen. The cup of the new covenant is poured out for you. Take and drink. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for bringing us together again, wherever we are. 
wherever your table is spread, that we would know your love in the shared food. We would know your peace in the communion we have with you, that the connection we have with one another, with the church, with all of creation, is vouchsafed and protected in your Holy Spirit. For this we thank you. Send us from this place to be a people of compassion and sharing, of hope, help, and caring. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, we have a food drive going on for our food pantry, Island Heart Food Pantry. It is a time when shelves are bare, but the need has not gone away. If you wish to participate, you may send food to the church or you may donate to the church. Mark it for Island Heart Food Pantry, and you can send it to 233 North Country Road, Mount Sinai, New York, 11766. Or you may donate securely online. Please designate it as for Island Heart Food Pantry. We also know that the time of pandemic has been a time when giving has slowed at the church. The needs are still there, including digital worship and taking care of one another. And as we are opening the building up, as we are changing our protocols, the need is still there. If you wish to donate to the church, we invite you to do so. Again, you can mail something. Mount Sinai Congregational Church, 233 North Country Road, Mount Sinai, New York. You may also donate securely online on our website, msucc.org. Look for the Donate button and just follow the prompts. We also have other activities coming up. We're looking forward to an all-church picnic times and all of those details to be announced. We have Baccalaureate Sunday coming up in June. We will have Pride Sunday coming soon. So please look for announcements, watch for emails, all those ways we stay connected. And I want to personally thank you for joining us in digital worship, whether this is the first week or one of many weeks. Thank you for being here. I offer you this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you. May you always know God's peace. Amen and amen. Go in peace. myself and wander far away when I find myself inside a mess I've made when I wish that I could just undo it all well then that's when I recall that there's a love that's waiting for me to come home this love is waiting for me to come home and there's nothing I can do and nothing I have done that can take away this love. I can never lose this love. When I lose myself and wander far away, find myself inside a mess I've made When I wish that I could just undo it all Well then that's when I recall That there's a love that's waiting for me to come home This love is waiting for me to come home 
And there's nothing I can do And nothing I have done That can take away this